whatever you think you're doing to get clients, you got a five exit. It's a tough niche, but it's also the most lucrative, I think, local business niche out there. This is some some top secret sauce that we've implemented. That's so good, dude. I love that script. If you want to scale fast, you're either going to have to put the time in or put the money in. One or the other, you can't have both. Right now, you've cracked the code on getting clients. This is crazy, by the way. They're not allowed to leave the office until they send out 5,000 cold emails and 1,000 texts. All right, Stefano was branding for real estate. What offer? Stefano, what do you mean branding for real estate? What offer? I recently watched a video uh, of yours with another agency owner inside real estate. And you mentioned how uh, real estate is such a proven niche. However, uh, they've been they've been burned so many times with so many marketing agencies. And you mentioned an idea that I really like because I have tons of experience in branding and social media, which was offering them something completely different like not the typical lead acquisition system, but offering them branding. Now, branding can be good in a sense, but I don't think that's going to really, really uh, get them a good ROI. But what I was thinking was maybe offering them branding as a way to allow um, referrals to become scalable like scalable referrals would be like the twist on it so that I have enough time. So I, so I have, say, for example, like a month's time to get as many clients as possible with that, then reinvest more and create a solid infrastructure so that I can start offering um, apart from branding with something that's really going to help them out, which are the ads, the automations and all that stuff. So, so here, here's, 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 here's my take. How do real estate, and this is a good lesson for you guys, how do people buy homes? Do you know? Referrals, tons of referrals. Okay, how else do people Facebook buy homes? Like if I want to buy a house, do I go on a Facebook ad? Do no. I click on a Facebook ad for a home? No, Maybe. no, the answer yeah. is no. <laughs> Probably not. Nah. Most people buy homes through a few things, okay? Number one is friends and family refers them to a realtor, okay? So, Oh, I, I reach out to my friend who I just, I know that bought a house. Hey, who did you use for realtor? That's probably the biggest way that realtors get clients through referrals. The next big way that realtors get clients is through social media. So for example, if you go on Instagram and you look up homes in Miami or homes in whatever, you'll start seeing content of all these realtors sharing the homes that they've listed essentially. And they end up starting to build a brand and people that are looking for homes, let's say you're browsing on the internet, then you follow them and then eventually you reach out. So I actually bought a house um, like a year, two years ago. And um, it's funny because we had two realtors and I made them compete against each other. Even though, I don't know if that's technically allowed, but whatever. Um, and one of them was through friends and family. One of them, I found on social media, I saw all of the homes she was listing. And I was like, this is the exact type of home I want. And I DM'd her. And then she became our realtor. So with that in mind, if that's how people get clients, you should support them in doing that. Whereas if you try to force a different acquisition strategy that doesn't really work, what's going to end up happening is you're going to build a churn and burn agency, right? Mm -hmm. That's what's happened with a lot of real estate ad agencies. And to be very honest, I've never recommended anyone to start a real estate ad agency just because I don't think agents sell their homes mainly through ads. Can it work? Sure. I'm not saying it can't work, but it's a lot harder. So if it was up to me, what I would do if I was going into the real estate niche is I would create a content offer um, or a branding offer, like you said, where I help them create content, right? Um, maybe they send me the footage, um, then I edit it and post it. Maybe I send them ideas. Um, there's a lot of ways that you could do this, but that's what I would do. And what's interesting, let me go ahead and show you this. Just have to pull it up. Give me one second. Uh, this right here, if you go into like the agency lab group and click on files, mm -hmm. you can find this file, but it has some of our highest performing ads of all time. And this one that we did for real estate was getting $18 appointments. So when I become a celebrity TikTok realtor and be known by everyone in your area, too many realtors are using the exact same marketing practices that simply no longer work. Traditional forms of marketing like ads and bus stops, news, whatever, blah, 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 just aren't gonna cut it anymore. Using my new blue ocean strategy, you can go from being a nobody to a celebrity agent. You could just take the word TikTok out. This is back when TikTok was really hot. You could just say celebrity agent which is 90 days. By effectively leveraging your online personal brand, you'll have tons of inbound clients. 
endless appointments, et cetera, et cetera. Want to learn the secret to becoming a TikTok celebrity realtor? Click below. That ad was got us the cheapest appointments consistently because anyone can get $18 appointments, but to do it consistently over a period of a few months without costs going up, that's that's where... Like if you throw up an ad today, you can get $18 appointments. But if you can do that for months with the same offer, that's that's the challenge. And we were able to do that. So I think that the big takeaway, and I know I'm spending a lot of time on this answer. And then support them to do that. So if your clients mainly grow through Facebook ads, like chiropractors, for example, those guys grow through face through ads. So for those guys, you can absolutely do Facebook ads. But for realtors, if you offer a service that helps them with the things that actually help them grow, like their brand, like social media, that's what's going to get them an ROI. That's what I would focus on. Essentially, you're building a content agency for realtors. I don't know if... Um, that's great advice. Thank you. For sure, man. Here, let me just pull this up. Give me one second. So this is one of the uh, ads we're running for our done for you program where we're running one of the agency's ads and uh the offer is a million views guaranteed and they th th what they what these guys do is they take viral videos that are proven to work and make them run it and it it hits a million views most of the time so and this is crushing because this is what actually yeah. this is what they want this is if, if you can help a realtor get a crap ton of views showing their listing that's what's going to separate them um, whereas I think that if you just run ads, you're going to generate leads, but it's going to, they're going to complain about lead quality conversion, because mm -hmm. think about it. If someone, let me just share one last lesson with you guys. If, if I'm a, if I'm sitting here, so like about a month ago, I had a, a pinched nerve in my neck. That's why I was like, I had a huge vertigo. I was in the hospital, I had a pinched nerve in my neck from, uh, uh, from a sports injury. And then what ended up happening is if I was, if I was on Facebook and I see this like ad for a massage, you know, maybe I'd be like, shit, I'm going to sign up right now. You know, like literally I was at lifetime yesterday. This is actually a true story. I was at lifetime yesterday and they were offering a 20 minute stretch, uh, where they, a 20 minute stretch session where like the personal trainer stretches you and you just sit there for free. And I was like, sign me up right now. I, I assume they're going to pitch me after my session next week and upsell me, but that's an impulse. I'm not going to do that for my house. <laughs> you know, when I'm looking for a house, I'm not just going to be like walking around being like, Oh, I want a house or, Oh, I want a massage for my neck. I want an adjustment. Whereas like, I'm going to take my time, find the right person. Therefore you have to play that game. So this is why, for example, this is another interesting take for dentists. If you are offering an Invisalign, that works really well with ads. But if you're offering dental implants, that works a lot better with Google. Because if you're looking to, if you, if you, if, with implants, it's when you're mal you lose teeth and you have to get teeth replaced. Most people that get their teeth knocked out, they're like, I need to go find a dentist right now. You're not waiting for an ad, right? You just go, well, if you had a, if, if you were playing a sport and you lost four teeth, someone accidentally hit you, right? You're playing basketball, someone hits you. What do you, are you going to wait for a Facebook ad? No, you're going to go on Google, right? Um, whereas if you maybe want your teeth to be whiter, or maybe you want them to be straighter, and you've been thinking about getting Invisalign, you're like, oh yeah, I think I should get Invisalign, but you haven't done it. You haven't done it. You haven't done it. Maybe eventually you see an ad and you're like, fuck, this is awesome. Let me sign up. So with realtors, it's not... Most people aren't just like, oh my God, there's a house. We should buy it. So yeah, that makes sense. Hopefully that helps. Yeah, it does. It does. All right, let's see. Let's keep going. Offer for personal injury lawyers. PI is a tough niche. So um, like I personally have a friend that runs a $60 million a year agency for lawyers. So it can definitely work, but you're dealing with a tough crowd. Um, what I would actually do if I were you is I would find, um, if I was going after PI attorneys, let me ask you, what, what are you already doing? Let's start there. Are you still on? You're just starting out. I would find a white label agency that has worked with lawyers that can crush it and just whether it's leads 
with ads or SEO, and I would resell their services. Because I think if not, it's too competitive and you're going to get eaten alive. If you do it by yourself, it's very, very hard. Um, that's what I would do personally. Um, there's a bunch of people in the group that work with personal injury attorneys. I would, I would post. If, if you make a post in the group, I can tag them. Say, hey, I'd love to white label someone who's crushing it for personal injury. And uh, I, uh, I'll tag them. But that's what I would do. As far as the service with personal injury, a lot of stuff can work. Um, Google ads can work. SEO can work. Facebook ads and you know Instagram ads, YouTube ads can work. It can all work because most people are looking for a lawyer both through Google and through ads. <laughs> Um, I think that, yeah, so hopefully that helps as far as what to offer. Um, in terms of how to position it in the ads, it more so just depends on which service you end up picking, right? I will say this. If you find someone that can rank lawyers on Google, they're, they're, that's going to pay the most. You know, I know of some law firms. Pay, my brother is a personal injury lawyer. I know of some law firms paying over $100,000 a month just for an SEO agency, which is crazy, right? So I think that one last thing on PI, leads are way sexier if you can sell leads with ads, but they're way less, they convert a lot less than SEO and Google. Um, here's another thing. Here's a great idea for you. One last golden nugget. And this is actually a golden nugget for anyone who is in the, uh, who works with professional services. Google just launched local service ads. So let me just show you. Joel's sharing a little hack. A little hackathon. Yeah, so look, th these are uh, Google service, uh, local service ads. Um, this is an actual Google ad. Uh, no one is advertising. Yeah, right here. You see Google guaranteed. These are local service ads. No one is really doing that right now or very few people. Um, that would be an interesting thing to test out for lawyers, especially non-PI lawyers. PI is going to be extremely competitive. But that that's something really interesting that you could uh, look into. Go, Google local service ads. It does take a little bit of time for people to get approved. Service ads here. I'll send you the website. Essentially, it's the highest form of um, it's the highest form of uh, of results on Google. These right here, whereas like traditional SEO, this is the first result for traditional organic SEO. This is the first result for Google Maps, but this is literally at the very, 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 very top, and it says Google guaranteed. <laughs> 99,300 9, reviews. That's pretty wild. Um, so that's what I uh, would do. Um, let's see. Simba said, can you repeat that, Joel? What did you mean by that? <laughs> that was a question, like, on, on the, about... What you were asking us to do at the beginning. Yeah, okay. drop the okay, question. Like when you were asking... Like, okay, okay, cool. I caught while you were saying that, so I didn't hear what you said to do. No, you're good. Chat. Did you write your question below? Yeah, I did. It's okay, underneath okay, the PI right. once. Oh, really? Hold on. Why can I see? Yeah, that? no worries. It's Which under is... Ethan, and then yeah, it's there. All right, I'll get to it. But why am I not now not seeing the best offer for PI? What the hell? Um, I see Ethan's. I'm just now starting out and trying to establish my cold email, but there's old and new cold email master classes within AL that say to do different things. Which cold email master class should I go off? of and stick with <laughs> um great question things change all the time so it's yeah. pretty much uh there's nothing i could do about it you know in terms of having all the new ones um here's the latest strategy one second um in this if you just follow what christian laid out in that youtube video he shows you how to set it up <laughs> okay, let's see in Facebook. All right. Joel, I'm having lots of trouble getting people to show up to my meetings, intro calls. How do I fix the show up rate? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give you guys a very uh a very good hack, okay?
So what you can put on the thank you page is have a, uh, have some sort of bonus on the thank you page. So you can say, wait, one last step. Um, actually that's you, um, one step away from getting a $500 ad credit with us. If you text this number right now with the word confirm, we will get you a $500 credit um, if you decide to move forward with us. Yes. Okay, this is, if you put this on the thank you page, what's gonna happen is they're gonna be texting you now and you're gonna get texts coming in. And now you will have the option to literally call them and have a conversation over text. But the hardest part is getting someone to actually engage with you. Um, so now this sets it up where it makes it a lot easier for people to engage. What you could also do if you wanna take it to the next level, um, something that I'm gonna start experimenting with, it's not ready yet, but I'm gonna start experimenting with having an AI text them. So now they're having a full conversation with with an AI before the call. And uh, I will see how that goes. I, have, I haven't actually implemented the AI, but this is, we're getting a ton of texts. We're getting a ton of people texting and texting and texting. And, and then you could literally just start to have a conversation. As soon as they text uh, you. Hey, Joel, so, sorry to interrupt, but uh, Shaheeb actually asked the question for me. My chat isn't working. Uh, we don't run paid ads. We do only cold outreach. So the question is for that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Well, what's your what's your out what's your process look like for the intro call? Uh, so just schedule them for DMs. Uh, schedule the time for the intro call for DMs. Can um, other DMs are cool. Thanks. Can you show me? A, can you share your screen and show me? How's it going? Good, you? Uh, sure. Good. Well, yeah. Very let's good. mute. Let's let's mute Miguel. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, what did you want to see? Uh, can I see the DMs? I want. I need to see what's happening. So this is with uh, Josh. It uh, started here. The script was kind of bad, but uh, yeah, it's just sort of how it went. Daniel, I love that script, man. Great copy. Oh, all right. I, I thought it was kind of, I, I, I didn't know if it would work too well, but I was like, I know people just get really annoyed by marketers. So I just tried being a little bit different. So uh, it was sort of just here. Um, works tomorrow that's great uh next time don't yeah. send them two numbers by the way okay yeah uh, i just said this one it doesn't let me call americans uh so that's why so if he calls me i can take it on this number if i call him it'll have to be through this number mm. oh, that's so really that's a great combo and then what you try to call him yeah and he didn't pick up and this is not the first time i, I do cold calls as well and like Wait, wait, wait. What else? What happened after you called him? He didn't pick up. I and called then, him a few times. I didn't, he didn't pick up. I just messaged him now. But this isn't the first time it's happened. It's happened a lot. Did you text him? I did text him and I left a voicemail as well. Pretty damn good combo, honestly. Um, Probably easy. just caught him at a bad time where he got... Maybe, to, yeah. To he's, I decided. think he's a... Yeah, he, he's a track. He's like a. I would follow. I would just keep following up. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like a fantastic combo. I, I would just keep following up. Like it happens yeah. when we just can't get in touch with someone who genuinely wants to hop on. So I always think of like the worst thing that happens. Like, oh, dude, I hope everything's all right. Like, are you, let me know if you know this weekend or next week works for you. It's like just keep it chill. Don't don't worry. Just keep it chill. Okay. And a lot of the times it's the same problem with cold calls. Like we schedule a call and then like at the time they don't pick up or like yeah. And so probably just follow up, right? Yeah. Do you think uh, it's maybe so more of a rooted issue? Uh like not um like setting proper expectations in the call or with the DMs or do or do you think it's more just follow up or yeah? Dude, this was a 10 out of 10 combo. I would not change anything that you're doing. All that I would do is I would absolutely follow up. That's that's the only kind of variable here. Maybe also, to be honest, the only the only other kind of suggestions is I, I would have gotten his email mm -hmm. um, as well and sent him a calendar invite. Okay. Yeah. You could have you could have also sent a uh, have you worked with any other HVAC companies yet? Yeah, I have two clients. 
are, are they getting good enough results to make you a quick video? Yeah. Uh, maybe not a video, but I can ask them. Yeah. yeah I could ask them that. Yeah. If they're, they're down. Okay. If they're down, you could also send a, like two videos, be like, these are two of the people that I've worked with. Definitely check out the videos. And after you get them booked, after you get the calendar invite, so uh, email, calendar invite, um, also text them. I would maybe also text them and take the conversation off of Instagram. Be like, hey, this is Daniel. We were just talking on uh, Instagram. Is this a good time? Or, or, or sorry, is this the right? Uh, just want to make sure you got the text. That's what I meant to say. And then just get them on text, send the calendar invite, then drop testimonials. Um, and then also just keep calling. Like this is cold outreach. You're chasing them. They're not chasing you. Remember the three stages of how warm a prospect is. Outbound, inbound, organic. Outbound, you're going to them. Inbound, it's a little bit of both. You're infiltrating their newsfeed with ads. So you're going to them in a way, but they're also agreeing to come to you. It's a mix. It's a shared responsibility in how this conversation is happening. And then organic, you're putting content out. You're like, I don't need to talk to you. If someone wants to book in, they're coming to you. So outbound is going to be the hardest. You're going to have to follow up the most. Um, yeah, got it. Thank you. So yeah, this is a quick question. Um, you think it's going to be better if we like make the, like, like when we call call, right? Like we get their email and phone number and then book them. In. You think it would be better like if we get their email and like try to get them to book themselves in? So like, um, like that way they can take the initiative themselves and then they'll be like more likely to show up, I guess. Um, sorry, I couldn't hear you very well. Could you repeat the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my question was, um, so normally after like we call car, right? We get their uh, phone number and email and then oh, we book them in, right? So do you think it would be better if we, uh, if, uh, if we got their email and then we send them the booking link and then they book themselves in? No. No, make it easier, not harder. Also, if you're on the call with them and they're they can chat right then and there, dude, keep have the combo. Right, okay. you, you don't need to book them in when you're on the phone with them. Right. If they're able to talk. Yeah. But remember, you guys are playing the hardest game. This mm -hmm. is the hardest version of getting clients. So it's gonna be an uphill battle, but you can yeah. still win, right? Mm -hmm. Um yeah, so, what what it comes down to is once you have their attention, it's speed to lead, follow up, which is the name of the game right here for you in this case with Josh Ryan, and nurturing. So if there's anything you can do to position yourself better, and Rashawn and I were having a thread in this, um, if you don't mind, do you mind really quick? Um, can you show us your Instagram page really quick? I'll make it quick. Our Instagram page? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, or this Instagram, yeah. The one you messaged Josh Ryan with. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Huh? This is my personal account, though. Uh, I okay. saw the business account. It, uh, maybe no, that's good. Account. In fact, you right. want to use your personal account, not your business account. People want to connect with people, not a logo. Oh, am I still screen sharing? You are. All right. Which is good. Right. Uh, yeah, that's for just the profile. I just posted some pictures of the city. Uh, okay, so I would share a little bit more about who you are right um because people are going to snoop around before they hop on a call now chances are josh is chill totally chill with you know who you are and the conversation you had but when you do cold outreach you want to show a lot of authority as roshan mentioned so you want to have post content um on your instagram to really show authority about hvac that you know how to help them right um that's a whole nother training and conversation, but here, I won't boast too much, but like, if you look at mine, go to search and then like search up, you can also search up like Joel or Rashawn, but like, you'll see what I mean. And just a quick example, but like, you'll see it's a, it's a picture of me. It's post about reels. I'm showing life. So people mm -hmm. wouldn't snoop around 99% of the time. They're going to snoop around. They're going to check you out. It's no different than a girl checking a guy out right after a cold approach. Um, and so essentially they're going to like make sure that you're legit. And if you have a lot of great posts about how you've helped other HVAC companies and testimonials, dude, they're going to be like, oh, I got to hop on this call at 1 p.m. EST with this guy. 
So just letting you know, it's, it, it's not the same as like just DMing someone or cold calling and then you're good. It's like, you want to make the part, you want to look the part too. So that's all I wanted to share and what Rashawn was sharing too. All right. Yeah. No, thank you. Um, ben said, what automated qualification questions should I have set in Facebook ads messenger GHL that comes from Facebook ads B2C. So it's for my roofers qualifying homeowners lead from Facebook ads. Um, I would ask the homeowner, the roofer, what do they need to know? Right. What, uh, uh, build your qualifying questions based on what you need to qualify them for, if that makes sense. Um, without it being crazy, right? Like, don't ask them why, if, 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 if we reach out, are you going to work with us? Don't ask them that, but you can ask them things like, um, is it a roof repair, roof damage, blah, blah, blah. Like you are the homeowner, correct? Yes or no. So whatever the things that, they need to know to at least hop on the call. Um, that's what I would put in the qualification. Um, but it's also a balance, guys. The, the more barriers you guys add, the higher the quality, but also the, the less leads. And it's a balance between cost and quality. So I'll give you guys an example. You can book 10 calls, let's say for 40 bucks, going straight to calendar no qualifying $400 for those 10 calls, or you can add a shit ton of qualifiers, book two calls at $400 a pop. It's way more expensive, but you add a lot of qualifiers. Dream client. Let's say that your closing rate is one out of two. You close one, but on the 10 calls, it's one out of five, you close two. So you still close two clients on the two out of 10 versus one client on the one out of two, even though, um, you got a lot less quality. So it's a balance. It's not black or white. Everyone in business likes to make things black or white. Crazy offers, no crazy offers. Content or paid ads. Um, hardcore qualifying, perfect leads, dream clients, zero qualifying. Just get the leads in it. It's it's contextual. It just depends. I, I would add um, as much qualifying that they need without the cost going to shit. That's what I'd be thinking about. And I would say it's a balance between just getting a shit ton of numbers for them to dial or for you guys to text as, as much as it is getting the perfect number. Because a lot of the, the idea of only getting the perfect prospect is, I don't think it exists unless you're willing to pay a shit ton for it. It's a balance. So I would to, to, to answer your question, I would ask them what things do they need to know in order for them to go into the call with the details and information that they need. And I would add those things as long as it doesn't screw up the cost per acquisition for them. Cool. Jose said, I still work at a nine to five, so it's hard for me to cold call every day. Currently dialing in my cold email as a, fa uh, as a replacement. I want to scale pretty fast to quit my job and focus full time on my agency. Would you recommend running ads to speed up the process of getting clients also for roofers with Facebook ads and SEO be a good combo? Um, okay, so I'll, I'll answer the second question first. I think roofers is one of those niches where if there was a, ha a, a hailstorm and all these roofs got damaged, you can absolutely run ads because people aren't even aware that you can get a roof replaced with insurance if there's hail on it. There's hail damage. So it can definitely be an impulse of like, holy shit, I didn't know I could get my roof replaced because of the hail. Hell yeah, I'm going to click. Um, but also there's people that damage the roof randomly on a Friday and they're like, shit, I need to call a roofer. They go on Google. So I, I, I personally, I like the mix of both. If you can handle it, um, I think both will work for roofers. As far as going faster, you have to learn the lesson, Jose, that something's got to give. This is a business principle. Something has got to give. It's either going to be your time or your money. I'm going to say that again. right? You, you, you can't say, how do I keep my job, not put a lot of time and also not put a lot of money and go faster. So if you want to go faster, you're either going to have to quit and have all the time invested. And now you've just earned yourself an extra 40 hours a week to execute. Or you can spend the money on hiring people, running things like paid ads, 
so that you're essentially buying the time. So think about it. When you're running ads, you're buying the time that it will cost you to cold call. You know, Daniel over here is cold calling. He's putting, the, it's free, but he's putting the time in. It costs him. The cost comes in terms of the time, not in terms of money. You have to, this. And so, remember the lesson, the, the, the business principle, something's got to give. If you guys want to scale, something has got to give. So if you're wanting to keep your job, you're either going to have to give up money um, or what I did is I wanted to keep my nine to five. So I gave up equity. I, I found a business partner. We went 50, 50. And in a way that's money too. I'm giving up future money. That's, that's how I saw it. I was giving up future money. That's the cost. I kept my time, but I gave up future money. Something has got to give with that in mind. Would I recommend running ads? If you have the money from your job, then you should be playing more aggressive. If you have the, so again, It's it's strategy. It's not just you move once. It, there's moves that you can make. There's times to retreat. There's times to attack. There's times to sacrifice. There's times to just sit still and think. If you're at a nine to five and you want to speed up the process and you have the resources, the strategy, the chess move that I would make is going as hard as possible while keeping the stability. That's what I would do. I would try to push as hard as I can while keeping and maintaining this stability. And the way that I would do it is through investing into the business. Yo, can I, can I add something there too? Sure. Yeah. Yo, so I spent a ton of money on agency ads and I didn't fucking crack agency ads at all. But then I also started doing like lead gen and stuff like that through like D7 lead finder still wasn't doing anything. Dude, my best success came from literally Googling gym, calling every single gym and literally just being like, yo, I can make you money. I, I, I like literally just coming up with a sales script and just talking to people over the phone and even going in personally to gyms and talking to owners directly. Like that's where I had the most amount of success. So, I mean, it's, it's just up to like, you know, what everything works, just how it works for you. Um, Visa said, can you tell us more about Rank Rocket technology? Uh, next Friday, I'm going to do a whole demo for you guys. Um, I'm running a tier based services with a la carte packages for gyms. What's the consensus on that? Focusing on the fact that my cheapest packages requires at least setup, but the most sales energy and training and vice versa. Well, what, wait, let's see. Essentially having three tiers. Tier one is most expensive, but is an all inclusive. It includes, you're just starting out. Simba, you close Bradley Martin. But are you just starting out in the gym niche or, or no? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I just, um, I just closed Bradley, but uh, so I started off in plastic surgery, went from plastic surgery to med spa, had no success in either. And then just literally switched to gyms like for this last month. And in this last month, closed like six clients in gyms. Oh, great. What offer has been working the best? Honestly, that one that I'm running right now, like I just say like 20 clients in, in seven weeks and that's 20 walk-ins like to but seven which weeks. Which tier is that? Uh, tier two. Look, my thought is as you scale, I used to be a huge believer in just one niche, one market, you know, one strategy, et cetera, et cetera, one offer. If you're starting out, that is true. As you scale, you can add and be more flex flexible, get creative with things. But where you're at, I would try to just stay focused on one. It's going to keep things easier for you as you scale and you have more resources and you're like, Hey, we're going to, ex we're going to launch a new product or service. That's at a different price point. Uh, that makes sense. But I think having too much complexity is going to make it harder for you to scale. Um, if I'm starting out, I'm going simple, simple skills. Then if you want to get fancy with it, you can. Um, I'll give you an example. I've, I've had sale, my like sales teams sell two different prices, packages, et cetera. The moment we do that, sales go down. Only allowed to sell one product or service. Okay. We, we made the pricing very clear. Um, as we've scaled, we've been able to add more, but that's 
that's the for the that's tier the, one for the tier one i i, I kind of wanted to do that that way like um because like my my pricing is like 1500 already per month but so like the tier one i wanted to hit them with that just because like then i have like a set like you know ad spend and then i like kind of dictate that for like how well their ads and stuff are doing like so i, I don't know i i think i heard like nathan talk about something like that and i like kind of took that mentality and was like yo that's kind of a dope idea uh but yeah i i guess i understand what you're saying like just focus on on the small stuff right now until i grow i would focus on selling whatever you did to get six clients and don't introduce to other variables. And I'll just triple down. Why you, you, you said you didn't crack the code on ads, but. Okay. Don't change anything. So you're like, I wouldn't change anything. If, if you're, if you are closing tier two by pitching all three tiers then fine, keep doing that. My, my actual advice is, just double down on what's working. If tier two is what's working, then double down on tier two. Like, it, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Why even change something right now? It's so silly. Whatever you're doing right now that's working, try to ask yourself, how do I do a lot more of that and only that? Okay. All right. Most businesses, a lot of businesses never reach that point where they have that system that's cranking clients. And most businesses, actually, what happens is they find it and they lose it and they find it and they lose it. They have seasons of it, including a, including my businesses, by the way. There's seasons where things are clicking, everything's clicking, ads, offer, the pricing, product market fit, product price market fit, everything's the sales team's dialed in. And then there's times where it's just not. If you find that wave, if you caught the wave, right? Let's say you're surfing, you caught the wave, ride it all the way in. Don't, okay. don't leave the wave to find another one. And now you're waiting. That's the analogy, right? Most entrepreneurs, I, what they do, as soon as they get on the wave, they, they, they're like, okay, cool. I'm going to go find another one. Ride it all okay. the way into the shore. Okay. Yeah, I did. I watched a video of yours. I think it's yours and somebody else's video where you guys like have something where you're like, is it getting me closer to a sale? If not, like I have that board in my room. Dude, and then the, the, uh, you know, I work with this video production company and uh, I get a spot in their, in their studio. And, you know, I've spent weeks with them now. And I literally went over to their office and I was like, guys, what the fuck are you doing? Because they spend all day, all day, all day on the fulfillment. And they forget to put, it's like the airplane analogy. They put the mask on the other person, they don't, they're, but they're running out of oxygen. They don't put the mask on themselves first. And again, it's not one or the other. In business, everyone likes to operate in black or white. You got to get clients and you got to get clients amazing results. It's not one or the other. But I will tell you this, most people, most people are not nearly doing enough Most of you guys are not spending enough energy on getting clients. And if you think you are, like I told them, every single day, they're not allowed to leave. That's just a start. That was a start. That was, that's like the, the baseline of this is what you need to, and one of the guys like, oh, I'm going to a bachelor party. I said, I don't care. Does like, does Apple close down their store when whatever Tim cook is on vacation. I'm like, no. Yeah. You guys got to. Yeah. So, so I think, uh, sorry, that was a rant relevant from what you were telling. Yeah, about no, much appreciated. Put a lot in perspective. Yeah. Most people are just not nearly doing enough. Like you can't, I spoke with another agency lab member like two days ago, extremely kind, has a lot of talent. He was like, yeah, I'm sending 30 DMs a day. It's just not going to cut it. It's not going to cut it. Um, you guys got to... He's like, why, why don't we start out with 500 emails? I was like, why don't we start out with 5,000? You know? And he was like, well, what if I can't keep up with all the leads? These guys were like, what, what if I can't keep up with all the replies? That's better. I want you to be in such a state of abundance. 
because you have so much momentum. That's great. I've never seen a, 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 a company fail because they had too many leads, but I've definitely seen the opposite happen. The other problem is most, and this is another rant, but most entrepreneurs just don't want to get messy. They don't want, they want things to, to, to work in a controlled manner. And there's seasons of letting the thing break and there's seasons of fixing it. There's season, that's how business more so works. There's times to break shit. There's time to clean things up. It's not, most people want to build business in a very controlled manner of one step, two steps, three steps, four steps, five steps, six steps, one step at a time. And it's really more like, holy shit, we jumped 10 steps and then we fell off the stairs, you know, four, four steps. We hurt our foot. Okay, I got to work. I got Maybe that's a weird analogy, but it's like, I got to take care of myself for a little bit. And then I'm going to jump seven more steps and then fall down too. That's more so how business works. And mo most of you guys are not willing to let the thing break. They were like, Joel, what if can't keep up? I'm like, let that break. What if people are like, see that our brand doesn't respond to them on email after they say they are interested. I said, let that happen. Let it get messy. Let it, let it not be perfect so that you can make it perfect. If you, got, you guys are trying to build perfect, or most, a lot of people are trying to build perfect by taking one step at a time. But the real way to build perfect is to let things fall apart by being not perfect and then putting as much energy as possible into turning it into perfection. I'm consulting a company right now that has an, uh, a subscription product. And I asked them to send me their data. They're a few friends of mine. And they're helping me with content and exchange. And I realized their churn rate is terrible. They're getting like 300 new subscribers every month and losing 200. I'm like, guys, that's not, you're losing two thirds of the new people that you get. That's not good. And I said, I need you to email the last 1000 people that have churned. It's a low ticket product. Email the last 1000 people that have churned, ask them why they churned, get feedback, and let's put it in a Google spreadsheet and rank it from most common reasons of why people turn to the least common reasons why people turn. And then I told them, we're going to come up with a game plan to attack those things and make the product better. However, if they never got the thousand customers, how the hell would they be able to have the feedback to make it better? If they only got two customers and one of them was happy, the other one was not, how do you even know that the product sucks? You have no idea. So you need data. You need to let it get a little messy. So you can clean it up. Most people are trying to clean up something that isn't messy yet. So anyways, um, I'm going to go for eight more minutes. Then I got to run. My offer with SEO is ranked number one in 90 days. I'm finding that with this offer and other offers I've tested, I'm getting a lot, low booking rate, but a very high closing rate on sales calls. Would you recommend any changes in the outreach to get the booking rate higher? Is this for cold outreach, please? Yeah, it's cold emails. I mean, what, what's your number? Like out of how many emails are you closing people? Uh, booking is like five in every 1,000 emails sent, uh, but closing is like almost 60%. Send more emails. Just send more, more math. Okay. Yeah, try to hit the whole HVAC industry once a week. Awesome. I'll do that. Thank you. Those numbers are excellent. I don't know what I would improve, man. Like uh, enough, you're, yeah. you're, you're optimizing the wrong thing. The, the, the bottleneck here is more emails, not more bookings. Okay. Fair enough. That's actually very insane. Just put in perspective. So you, you got to ride that wave. For put in perspective, I was sending 500 emails a day with Alice digital and we were closing one to two cold email clients, well, uh, one to three cold email clients a month. So let's say three best case scenario. That means that I was sending 500 times 30. What is that? 15,000. Uh, 1500. Maybe it's 15,000. Yeah, 15,000 emails. So sending 15,000 emails, booking, uh, closing three people. So you're pretty much at a 15x improvement of what I was doing. So therefore, you just need to send more. Fair enough. Yeah, I guess I was comparing it to ads. So I guess I was looking at the wrong things. Yeah. Yeah. It's really good, man.
Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate you it. Money. You got it again. Same as Simba. You got a money hack where you're like squeeze the juice out of it as much as you I will. Want. I will. Awesome. Hey, Michael, what do you mean by best offer for testimonials? Yeah, dude, just to, uh, just to build up the testimonials, just to get more social proof. I want to, uh, that's the concept there. Um, okay. I'll give you some frameworks on what I believe works with testimonials. Number one, don't wait until people get a lot of results. The best time to get a testimonial is when people are excited about any result, even if it's small. For example, it's easier to get a testimonial from someone that just got a big win, even if they're one week into working with you versus someone that's been with you for a year and the excitement has died down. It's, it's more about the emotion and the feeling, less about the overall result. Most people just wait too long. So as soon as you see someone get a win, attack, you have to make the ask. Um, here, I actually have an SOP that I can give you that breaks all this down. One second. Testimonial. Okay, here we go. Anyone that is crushing it or posts a win, immediately ask them to do a success interview. Hey, name, so excited to see you crushing it. Wait for a response. And you can open it up however you want. If you wouldn't mind, I would love to interview on Zoom for five to 10 minutes super fast. And you can share your success story with us so far. Is that something you would be open to? Again, it, it would be super fast and easy. I'll just ask you a few questions about your experience and it would help us out a ton. What I've noticed is way harder to get testimonials. It's way easier to get interviews. This makes people feel like, this uh, touches on people's ego. The other one makes them feel kind of exposed. They're like, shit, I'm going to put myself out there. They're going to see that I'm giving them my word. Whereas this is like, oh, I'm getting featured. This is pretty like already immediately easier. Um, I also tell them it's fast, quick. You just have to hop on Zoom. I ask you questions, done. They're not like, what am I going to say? Oh, I didn't like this. It's like, okay, five to 10 minutes, done. Send this immediately after. Also, what is the best address for you? I would love to also send you a gift in the mail for being such an amazing client. As soon as the, the thing is now you're, you're giving and your ask was so small, they're very likely to say yes. The gift can be pretty much anything. It could be a sweat. It could be a t-shirt. It could be a wine bottle. It could be a, it could be, if, if you can personalize it for your clients, that would be unreal. Like I would be unreal. Like it, it, now, now it's hard to do that at scale. Um, it's hard to do that at scale. But um, if you can send a personalized gift, they're going to be like, holy shit, this guy's awesome. Um, if you're not sure who's crushing it, send this to everyone. Hey, name, how's everything going? Just wanted to check in. If, if going well, react positively and then invite them on a success interview. Um, get them on Zoom ideally the same day or next day. Be like, it'll take five to 10 minutes. Do you want to do it right now? Oh, you can't do it now. Can you do it tomorrow? Oh, later today? You can't do it later today. What about tomorrow? Um, after the Zoom is done and you're finished recording, ask them if, if they would be willing to post on Trustpilot. If you take some of the or Google reviews or Facebook, wherever, if you could take some of the key highlights from the testimonial and write it out for them. So by the way, just to confirm, is this the right address for you? I'm going to send you a gift for everything you've done to help us. It really does go a long way and it does mean a lot. Okay, perfect. And here's where you can ask. You want to... Agency lab swag bag, nice bottle, donuts. We got a bunch of gifts I can send you. Amazon gift card, you know. Um, oh, and one last thing, I would love to ask you if you're open to it. I would love to take some of the key highlights from the interview, and you're going to type it out for them. This is important. People are lazy, and I can tell like, you. You're not going to lie or take anything that wasn't said. You're going to take what was said and just condense it into a written testimonial. Um, and I can type it out as a quick, short review for you to post on Trustpilot or Google Review, basically covering what we talked about. It will literally take one or two minutes and it helps out so much. And again, I'll type out the highlights. So you just have to post it. Now, if you have a team asking for reviews, like what I tell, I don't do this as much in agency lab, but my other companies, we tell team members, it's $100 per uh, review or testimonial that they get. Agency lab, we have such a big wall of case studies, reviews that I don't, I don't need it. But like when I'm starting new companies, we started a funding company and I told everyone it's hundred dollars per review that you generate for the team. So now that you're also incentive, you're not just incentivizing the clients, you're incentivizing your team. So if someone gets you 10 reviews, it's a thousand dollars. Now that's a pretty big investment, but that's 10 freaking reviews. Right. And we actually, the way we do it is we tell them $50 for a trust pilot, $50 for a testimonial video or interview. So both is a hundred. So it's like, would you pay a thousand dollars to have 10 video testimonials and 10 trust pilot reviews? 
I would, I would pay 5,000 and have 50 and I'm done. Once you have 50 testimonials, 50 trust pilots, you're pretty much done. You don't need more. Anything else after that is icing on the cake. So it's like, would you pay 5k to fix your social proof issue once and for all? Would I pay 10k for a hundred? For sure. Then I'm like, well, you have a hundred. It's like, you could literally scroll with a client on a zoom. It's like, look, we know what we're doing. Trust pilot, Google review. It doesn't matter. Uh, someone just asked. It's more so where your industry searches for things, you know, whether it's Google reviews, trust pilot, like some industries care more about one platform than others. Um, it's more just having, I, I will say this, be very careful with trust pilot. They are one of the biggest, I don't want to say scams, but they're, extremely aggressive. If you decide to use Trustpilot, here's what's going to happen. If you want to be able to respond to reviews, you have to pay $500 a month. If not, you can't even respond to your own reviews. Once that page is up, you can they own it. You cannot take it down ever. If you shut down your company, change names, nope, sorry, we own it now. If you want to be able to display, now if anyone says anything, you take that copy, put it on your website, they're going to give you a big warning that everyone can see that you're using the trust pilot information incorrectly until you pay the $500 a month. So they are extremely aggressive at getting you to pay the $500 a month. And now they own your authority online pretty much. Whereas like with Google review, you can respond to it for free, right? You can shut down the business. You could take it down. They are, they, I mean, it's a great business model, but extremely aggressive. If you want to respond display if you want to respond to reviews or display reviews you're gonna to have to pay the 500 a month and you can once it's up you can never go back so it's more so where the industry like the online marketing industry it's big on trust pilot big on they're not like google reviews but like hvac companies maybe do value google reviews because that's how they do their own reviews right they might be like, yeah, that's how they think. They're thinking Google reviews, Google reviews. They're not thinking Trustpilot. So for you, I'd probably do Google reviews and um, uh, testimonials. And then, by the way, you could take the Google reviews now and like use it on your land. Oh. The reason I like to have both is because then you could like you can squeeze more juice out of the one testimonial, right? It, it's. It, but, uh, I think those are the questions. Wait, how many questions were there missing? Just two. Leave Here, a... just send it to me. Double check though, because I, I see some other questions being dropped. So double check. If anyone has any other questions, drop them within the next minute. Appreciate you guys. See you next Friday. Keep crushing it. Cool, cool, cool. Let's win. Peace.